Let's take a look at the graft, flatten, simplify and reverse tools in Grasshopper and how they can be used on objects, lists and data trees. Let's start by creating three simple lines in Rhino and reference them into Grasshopper. So I'm just going to draw a line like this and I'm going to rotate it with my gumball. You could rotate it with the rotate tool if you want. Um, I'm just going to move it to the origin point like that. And then I'm just going to make two more copies of it. So one, two, three, like that. So we've got three lines just sitting in Rhino. And then we're going to reference them into Grasshopper. So we want to do this using a curve container. I'm just going to drop a curve container onto my canvas. I'm going to right click and go set multiple curves. And then I'm going to select these three curves, hit return. Um, so we've got them referenced nicely into our Grasshopper definition. I'm going to create a panel and let's have a quick chat about these curves. So our three curves are referenced into one Grasshopper component and each curve is its own object. However, when they're all referenced together, they create what's called a list. So we've talked about lists in previous tutorials. Lists can be thought of as collections or groups and they're important tools in Grasshopper as they allow us to control collections of data and match objects to one another from separate lists. As we saw in the last tutorial, we matched some Voronoi cells to distance number values to create our attractor point algorithm. So far we've discussed objects and lists in this tutorial series, but there's one other important data structure that we need to get familiar with, and that's the data tree. Data trees could be thought of as lists within lists. So take our curves for instance. What if we wanted to divide these curves into a series of evenly spaced points? I'm going to double click on the canvas and use the divide curve component, which is right here. And this is a component that will enable us to divide any curve into an equal length segment of points. So you'll see here we've got a curve input, the curves we wanted to divide, the count, which is the number of segments we want to divide, and then kinks. We're not going to worry about the kinks in this um, tutorial. So I'm going to plug the curves into divide curve, and by default the count set to 10. I'm actually going to maybe just make that five for now, just so it's a little bit more simple. So we have three curves, one, two, three, and each of those curves is divided into five points. So let's see what happens when we plug our points into this panel. We actually get a list and another list and another list. So now we've got three lists sitting within our overall data. And this is what we call a data tree. So our data tree is organizing the data that we've created in Grasshopper in a way that's easy for us to manipulate and understand. We now have three lists sitting within our overall list, and each of those three lists relates to one of these three curves. So you could almost think of it as groups of points within the overall list. So we've got three curves, which means we have three groups of divisions, and within those groups we have six points. We can also view this using something called the param viewer. I'm going to drop a param viewer onto our canvas and we're going to have a look at this. So we see here we have data with three branches in our data tree. So we have one group of points which is related probably to this curve, a second group of points related to this curve, and then a third group of points related to this curve. Data trees are sorted using something called path numbers and this helps split our data into separate lists. The path numbers are seen here on the left of the parameter viewer. If we wanted to locate point 3 in the second curve, we would just look inside path 0, 1 and find item number 3. When using Grasshopper, you may have noticed some of the icons that appear when you right click on the input or output of a component. These tools are data management tools and they help give us greater control over the data we are using in Grasshopper. Let's talk about the reverse option first. The reverse option simply reverses the order of the visible list. So the data tree itself is not going to be reversed, but the objects on the lowest branch of the tree will, which is these lists. So what will happen is item number 5 will become item number 0, and 0 will go to item number 5, and vice versa, and we'll get a reverse list. I'll click and you'll see it happens. So you see 000 drops to the bottom, and 0099 goes to the top in this instance could unreverse that and we'll have our list back to normal. If we reverse the curve back here, that'll have a flow in effect and suddenly we have this curve being the first in the list, this being the second and this being the third, which then divides these curves up, which means you get a slightly different data structure over here. The next one I want to talk about is simplifying. 
Simplifying removes the extra zeros from your data tree's path numbers. So these path numbers we were just talking about before, they generate an extra zero every time a data tree gets manipulated. So you see how I've got a zero, 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 one, and zero, two. If you're working on a really complex algorithm, it's not uncommon to find yourself with lots of zeros. So zero, 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 one, zero, 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 two, making your data harder to read. And that means it's harder to match with other trees and lists. To mitigate this problem, it's recommended to use the simplify option to remove these zeros and clean up your path numbers. So you see my path numbers now changed to zero, one, and two. Let's next talk about grafting. I'm gonna make a copy of this curve component. We're gonna do a little algorithm down here to show off how the grafting tool works. So if I create a parameter viewer, we can kind of see what's coming out of this um, curve that we've got here, which is a flat list of um, data with no branches and no data tree. Grafting is a way of turning a list into a data structure. If you graph the list of objects, the objects will then be put onto their own lists. So let's watch this in practice. I'm gonna actually graft using a graft tree component here, okay, rather than right clicking showing graph, just so we can compare these two. So I've got my graph tree here, and let's create another param viewer and see what happens. So you'll see the comparison here between this flat list um, of data with one branches versus the grafted version where every single curve that we have that we've referenced in is now put on its own um, branch. So we now have a data structure where these curves are on their own branch in the list. Where this gets interesting is when you try and operate on a data tree. So say for example, we wanted to loft these curves. I'm gonna use the loft component, which works the same way as the loft works in uh, Rhino. So we can loft these three curves in this uh, list that we have here, and we'll get a nice surface basically. It's reading all three um, curves in that list, and then it's lofting them. If we create another loft component, and we loft this grafted tree, I'll just preview that one off so we can see, you'll notice that we don't actually get a loft from this. So why is that? Grasshopper operates on a list level. So what it's doing when we loft these curves that aren't grafted is it's finding these three curves in a singular list and it's saying, okay, I'm gonna run a loft option on these three curves. Whereas if we look at our data tree, they're all on separate lists. So it's running the loft on this curve on its own, then on this curve on its own, and then on this curve on its own. Grafting can also be used to match data trees together. Let's take a look at a quick example. I'm just gonna copy these guys from the top here again, and we'll drag this down to the bottom. So we've got our curve and our divided curves again. We could go and create maybe just a circle component, like this. I'm gonna plug the points coming out of the circle into this plane here and I might make the radius a little bit bigger. Let's make it 50, see what that looks like. Oh, they're a little bit too big. Let's make them about 15. There we go, perfect. And then like we've done previously in the previous tutorial, let's maybe scale uh, these circles. So these circles are still a data tree. You can kind of see if we have our parameter viewer, this data tree is carrying along the whole way through based on the division of curves. So we've got our three kind of um, lists within this data tree and they relate to these three lines that we've drawn initially and I am going to scale these um, geometries I'm going to scale them from the um, center points that we have coming out of divide curves so they're all just scaling based on those points based on their relative points so in this sense we've matched up these two data trees right we've got a data tree of points with three branches and then six points on each branch. And then we've got the same, we've got a data tree of circles with six circles on each branch. And they're basically operating on each other. Now we can actually use graft to change how we go about scaling each of these uh, circles that we have here. I might preview a couple of these guys off like that. I am going to just create a panel. And into that panel, I am going to type in the numbers one, two, and three like that. Um, we're going to turn this panel into a list. To turn the panel into a list, just right click on uh, the panel and select multi-line data. And you'll see straight away the panel is assigned um, some values. So we've now got a list of numbers coming out of this panel. I'm going to create an integer container. So that's this container here. Um, and I'm going to plug those uh, 
numbers into here. And we're basically going to scale um, these circles based on these integers. But basically what I want to do is I want to scale the circles that are on this curve by a value of 1, the circles that are on this curve by a value of 2, and the circles that are on this curve by a value of 3. If I go and plug this into the factor, it won't do that right now. What it's actually doing is it's scaling the first item in this uh, circle list, which is this bottom circle here, by a factor of 1. It's scaling the second item by a factor of 2. And then it's scaling the third onwards by a factor of 3. And then it's doing the same for each of these curves. And that's because we have a little bit of a misalignment in our data structures. If we want to match these data structures, we can easily just use the graph function. So the data structure that we want to get to is something like this, where we have three branches, and we're able to operate on each of those branches using this panel. So let's go and create another param viewer. I'm going to plug that into there. If I right click on this integer component and I graphed, we now have a data structure that matches up with this parameter viewer. So now what's happening is for the first group or for the first group of data coming out of the circles, we are applying um, the first branch from this data structure, which is one. So we're scaling by one here. Then for the second branch, we're scaling by this second branch, which is two. And then for the third branch, we're scaling by the third branch, which is three. We could then go and loft these curves like this. And you'll see once again, the loft only operates on that list level. So it's taking the three curves, I'll plug that into here, coming out of the first branch and lofting them all together. Then the curves coming out of the second, lofting them together. Then the curves coming out of the third and lofting them together as well. So let's talk about the last option. We've discussed reverse, we've discussed graft, and we've discussed simplify. Let's talk about flatten. Flattening is probably the easiest of the options to understand. Flattening simply turns any data tree into a long list and removes the data structure entirely. So up here I've got a data structure, but if I select flatten, you'll see my data structure is completely removed. And I just have one fl flat list of 18 points. We can visualize this with a panel. We no longer have a data structure here. We've just got a list of flat circles. And then plugging this into the loft uh, component means it's going to try and loft every single one of these circles. So you see it lofts from here all the way around and then it goes back to the next curve again and all the way around because we've now got a completely flat list of data. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an understanding as to how data trees work and how to use the graft, flatten, simplify and reverse options inside of Grasshopper. Data trees enable you greater control over your designs in Grasshopper but the only way to master them and understand them completely is to keep practicing.